everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, watching our uh, special new class. Uh, we are broadcasting again like from our uh, HK office in Kagawa, Japan. And we have a special guest today, and uh, that's our CEO, Mr. Fuji. Hello, uh, this is Fuji speaking. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, today, I attend this event the first time, and uh, I want to show you uh, my uh, presentation of uh, vegetarian ramen. Uh, later, I want to show you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so thank you, Mr. Fuji. Like, so it's like, you know, we are very excited to have Mr. Fuji like for the first time in this uh, special noodle class. And uh, um, so, for those of you like who don't know much about like, you know, who Mr. Fuji is, like, you know, I, I like to I like to introduce him and I uh, do, do like a bit of like introduction of him. So we are we are doing this uh, special noodle class uh, by Mr. Fuji like for the first time and. Um, so Mr. Fuji has been like working in various aspects of the noodle industries for almost half a century. He founded this company, Yamato Manufacturing Company. He started out as a manufacturer of noodle machines designed for restaurants, small production, to produ produce fresh Japanese noodles such as udon, soba, and ramen. In designing these, um, in designing these machines, what he cared most about are deliciousness of the end product, ease of use, and safety. For these to materialize, he did years of research on how noodle making artisans, primarily by hand, made fresh noodles and incorporated them into designs of his noodle machines. Because he thought that the deliciousness of noodles made on the noodle machines is what his customers care most about, he put it on his first trial and trial and design of the machines. Do you think he cared in his career? Uh, he created a career based on this. What is the biggest thing customers care about? The noodle schools, noodle restaurants, a company? Sancho, like this is our sister company, he's great he over 30 years ago. So he taught over, so he taught over um, 5,000 students at his noodle schools and developed a unique cooking method called digital cooking. Coming from an engineer background, so he, uh, he, he used to work as an engineer at the power side industry of company, uh, designing aircrafts, you know, uh, tanker ships, and he had to develop ways for anyone to produce the same product with consistent quality every time. Like, it's, it's like assembly drawings for these uh, machines. So using um, digital cooking methods, many of the graduates successfully built their own restaurants serving little dishes in open schools. So today he will share some of his special little recipes that are vegan and also great for the uh, delivery business in the current situation with COVID-19. So after he seen how COVID-19 started damaging his customers, primarily restaurants, he's been thinking hard about ways to help them survive and even thrive in this crisis and the post-COVID-19 era. He almost over half a year since the pandemic broke out, and we've been trying to see what we can do and talking to existing customers in Japan and other countries to determine how the business operations of our customers should, should be during and after the crisis. So we have to admit that we haven't found the ultimate solution, but we at least know a certain direction where we should go. We'll continue to study and try our errors and the ongoing efforts and communication with existing the restaurants in Japan, as well as across the world, come up with new ideas, business models, and products. Because our goal is to help our customers succeed in the business for long term, we'll continue to work on these issues and share them with people who are in need of them. So this plan is going to be the first one on these issues. And uh, let us share with you some of the things we've been working on since the pandemic broke out. Um, we've been talking with the main
sorry, uh, we, we, had, we had a problem again with the sound. Um, so the nature of COVID-19 and how, so I we put this class um, in the following agenda, like so, um, I'm gonna be explaining the, uh, the words from the like, you know, you know, like, so he's been um, putting up his uh, lecture um, to um, some of the restaurant customers that we have in Japan, and uh, so he's been like, in the car, like, how he can survive uh, during and after this COVID-19 crisis. And, um, well, um, so my, my colleague uh, Megumi is going to make um, the fresh noodles on the noodle machine after that, and then we'll, we'll have the, uh, we'll, we'll move to our kitchen, where Mr. Fu is going to show um, two types of uh, um, vegan ramen dishes that are, that are also great for uh, takeout and delivery. And um, lastly, like we do the FAQ session at the last, and uh, last, so um, if you have uh, some questions during the class, Please feel free to um, uh, send them in the comments. And uh, Mr. Fuji is uh, going to be like happy to answer your questions. So um, I'll be talking about the uh, the lecture part uh, that Mr. Fuji like has this for, for this lecture uh, for this class. Um, so the nature of COVID nineteen and how to survive the COVID nineteen crisis. So the true meanings of like and impacts the COVID nineteen had on us. What COVID-19 really has been to us is the destroy of businesses. It's been killing many of the businesses that are low in productivity and not fit in the era of COVID-19. The so death toll from COVID-19 in Japan has been small, but it's been getting devastating impact on the economy. The United States has been severely damaged in both aspects. And so we have this, um, we have data that like, um, the compares the GDP of um, these countries, these uh, regions. Uh, in January, March period, and uh, April, June period. And uh, so China is the only one that's, that's, uh, that did better during the uh, and April and June period. And like everyone else like doing really bad. Uh, so the population in each country went almost unchanged before and after COVID-19. What changed are the lifestyles and values and how people eat. And this is also like data we have like for um, um, dining out markets, like takeout and delivery markets and cooking at home markets. So basically like people buy uh, ingredients from a supermarket and cook, cook and eat at home. Uh, so the, uh, in Japan, like they, they categorize these uh, markets um, into like these three categories. So um, of course like restaurant business like belong to like dining out uh, market size. And then so like, you know, they had like comparison between like in the, these periods. And then, uh, so like, this is a data about like, that of like Japan's, but like, you know, if, you, if you can check the kind of similar data of your country, you know which market you should focus on. And so to, to summarize what happened in the markets after COVID-19, the markets, business we, some of the markets we had disappeared and new markets and business emerged. So how, how food business should survive in the post-COVID-19 time? So we need to learn from like how it survived like the great turning points in the past. We need to redefine our businesses to learn from like failures and successes. And we shouldn't lock our, our businesses in these three markets, dining out, cooking at home, taking take out, delivery. These categories are just what economists created to make measurements easier. There are many businesses, big and small, that could survive because they couldn't escape from the confinement of their business categories. For example, movie theaters were beaten by TV and other media companies, so they need to de redefine their business concept to embrace the bu their businesses as entertainment businesses. The same things are happening in automobile industries. For example, Tesla is a computer company that manufactures automobiles that combine functions with vehicles and computers. Google is an IT company that invests heavily in autonomous cars for transportation business. Uber and other car sharing companies redefined transportation businesses like traditional taxi businesses. How can car companies survive competing against them? They have to redefine the business concepts. They need to think about transportation on scale or combination of luxury, speed, and entertainment. We have to do the same for our businesses by looking at our industries and businesses from different angles. 
So how can we survive COVID-19 and come out stronger? We've been observing talking with our customers primarily in the restaurants in Japan and other countries over the past six months, and I found out the following characteristics. Very common in the restaurants that have done good or better than pre-COVID-19 period. So the first one, like product products quality is high, and they are located in suburbs with a large uh, seating capacity, and the sales of their sales for like takeout delivery ratio is high. Maybe like we, we may you know we maybe like say the same things like in your country as well. So the restaurants that haven't been doing good were the opposite, at least in one or two of these points. In short, it's getting clearer how restaurants win or lose and what kind of restaurants can survive. To survive to survive in the COVID post COVID nineteen era, we need to focus on and take actions on the following six points. The first one the deepen your understanding of what your business is about. So what is the true essence of your business? We need to think about it deeply. Serving on food is only the means of business. The essence of business is to solve customers' problems. For example, the, a business concept of Starbucks is to provide third places. Starbucks had a big success globally with this business concept. Many businesses focus on short-term gains. We need to aim for long-term success. Most businesses prioritize solving their own problems instead of customers. For us to understand the essence of our business better, we need to understand customers' behaviors from their viewpoints. And as food providers, we need to focus on deliciousness, high quality, and being health conscious. The second one is speed. So smartphones have been changing our lives ever, even after 13 years of when iPhone came out in 2007. It also changed Apple out dramatically as a company. There's almost nobody who does not rely on smartphones anywhere in the world now. Our business has changed as well, like in terms of like how we communicate with our customers. It was 13 years ago, but like COVID-19 also changed the world dramatically. The speed at which things change has been like faster and faster, and now that time is the most precious resource for everyone. So it's becoming essential for our business to improve things, to find some breakthrough route uh, continually by continually walking through PDC, PDCA cycles. So we need to fail fast to succeed at the fastest speed. Focus on customers. The behaviors of customers change dramatically through COVID-19. There's no way to win a business other than understanding customers' behaviors. We can naturally come up with what we need to do by understanding customers' behaviors that are different from pre-COVID-19 period. We need to put ourselves in the customer's shoes and understand, understand the inconveniences, troubles, or difficulties that customers are sensing. Customers who fear, fear uh, infections are now willing to eat at restaurants without any measures against the virus. They'd rather eat and drink at home to take out meals. So the fourth one is productivity. We need to keep on doing and implementing the following endlessly to increase productivity for our survival. Compiling your routine jobs into manual mechanization and automation. We need to compile what we do daily into manual so that everyone else can do the same things at the same quality. Among them, the biggest impact we can make is automate sales. We don't know how to sell our products, but we customers ask us to sell our products to, the, to them. We need to create structure that makes that this happen. Labor saving automation are also important so we can spend more time and resources on things that make bigger impacts on our businesses. Fifth one is proposal for businesses in the COVID-19 era. We have to compete on what our businesses are really about, true nature of our business. What is the essence of foods? Now that that would like be like for our survival, we have to eat for our survival. But like eating at some restaurants makes people feel sick. But like, what if like, you know, we eat at these restaurants and then you know we feel better? What if we like people get into better shapes by eating at these restaurants? What's the essence of like dining out? We build that it's an entertainment business. We didn't sell our products directly. We had to de develop a flow of mechanisms that people want to buy our products. And then the uh, last one is uh, what's most important is like never give up because that be end of the business. 
So, um, and um, so some of the some of the um, business concepts that have like really, really, um, really contemplating are like five hundred little coffee shop. Um, you have to help like uh, small restaurants. So basically, we can do the production fresh noodles in front of the shop um, to promote homemade noodles in action. Um, for any noodle, uh, fresh noodles, uh, soups and sauce, toppings and sides, and take on this. Um, they have whole meal replacement products. Um, so I think some of our customers are doing like um, uh, home, home, like, uh, home ramen kits or something. That it was a uh, for uh, you know customers can uh, cook them and uh, eat them at home. And then so in, uh, in this setup, like there's a dining in, uh, and then the pricing is more than dining uh, for us. The other type of business, like we we uh, in uh, the food truck or like food retailing or food. So we're gonna retail like all food items. We focus on noodles on lightweight truck, providing healthy foods, um, no chemical seasoning or additives, organic, gluten free noodles. We have our new options, a dining meat, take out, a big up, retail home. And of course, the pricing, we set the pricing, a lower than the kind of products, and then we uh, make the takeaways. So, um, so, this is uh, what uh, Mr. Fuji like had for this uh, lecture. Um, but like for um, for those who like for you know like he, he was basically like interested in like not like finding out like what you were interested in learning. So if um, there are certain subjects that you are interested in um, learning or like you know you need to know like from Mr. Fuji, um, please uh, send them in the comments or like um, you know you guys can like send us emails uh, or like send us send them through uh, contact forms like on our website. So we have uh, some ingredients, and this is a solid ingredient. These uh, two, so we have like flour for ramen noodles. Flour for ramen noodles is like around, like with the protein going to like around 11%. Um, then this is the whole wheat, powder, whole wheat. And these are the liquid ingredients. So we have water, we have a canci and salt. Okay, and so these, Gonna be like gonna be liquid. Okay, so let's uh, start making dough first. So this mixer, uh, this machine is for rich milk one. It's a, it's a four in one machine that. Um, Production capacity of like up to hundred sums, like around like hundred sums fresh noodles from from scratch. And so first, uh, it's got a mixer. It's a ten kilograms mixer, and that means like you can mix up to like ten kilograms of uh, solid ingredients. And on top of that, you're adding the liquid. So and uh, so keep adding now. Okay. And um, so like the minimum batch for this mixer is like four kilograms, four kilograms. So we are doing four kilograms of uh, solid ingredients. And then top of it, she's adding um, liquid, liquid about like 40% to the weight of flour. So that means four times 0.4. So that's about like two kilograms of uh, liquid. Um, 
still, but like you can just like try your hand and watch your hand. And uh, so she, she put the dough in like right, plastic bag and uh, they sit at like, room temperature. So that, that's, uh, that's what we call like resting process. And resting process is very important uh, to further develop the, uh, the cooking structure inside dough. So it's, uh, it's very important. And then what she's doing now is that like she's feeding the dough into the uh, into a set of rollers. The set of rollers and then you can you can actually uh, adjust the roller gap between these rollers. And so she's uh, putting this dough through the, uh, the roller gap like two millimeter first, two millimeter and that's the initial roller cap, and uh, so what we are getting is that a sheet of dough that's 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 in, that's two millimeter thickness. Like um, the dough that's 
according to the rollers is like you basically pour millimeters. It goes like two millimeter plus two millimeter, four millimeter. And uh, so four millimeter equivalent door is going, going through to the going to the rollers. And um, and she she set the roller gap to three millimeters because we um, we want to thin it thin it uh, thin it but like you know we will want to thin it like drastically because like if you do that like if you just sit or if you sit the sit the roller gap like for example like two millimeters or something um, that that's gonna damage the goodness from the inside dough so we want to gradually thin it and gradually thin it and. To do that, like we will uh, apply this like simple rule of uh, seventy percent rule. So, at, at each round, like she do, like uh, we uh, multiply the uh, rule down by seventy percent in uh, the previous thickness of dough. So now it's like three millimeter uh, rule gap. The dough is going through, and and the next. Step is to again like second point. So normally you do this white process just to make sure that like the structure inside the hole is uh, completely developed. So that was three in meter thickness, right? And so three plus three, six, six times seventy percent, point four point uh, four point two per meter. But like to make it simple, like we Round it down to 4.3 millimeter. So the door is now going through the rolling gap of 4 millimeter. And from this point on, because this is a pretty sticky dough, so we want to keep it from, well, from sticking, so it will start dusting from this point on. So this, this machine has automatic duster that you can actually uh, adjust the, the volume dusting as well. So the better the more you have to dust. the roller gap to 2 mm, 3 times 0 0.7, 2 .3, but round it up to 3. Make it simple.
before we cut it, we should measure the actual thickness of the dough and then add like 2.6 millimeter. So there's a difference of 0.6 millimeter between the actual thickness and the roll gap, she said. And so to set the roll gap to get the final thickness, so the final thickness we are that is 2.2 millimeter. So we set the roll gap to uh, 1.6 millimeter so that when it's thinned, um, the roll gap of 1.6 millimeter, we can expect the actual thickness of dough to expand back by 0.6 because the difference between them, the actual thickness roll gap is now like 0.6. So we set the roll gap to 1.6. And this is the kind of cutter we use. We, we call it like slit dough cutter. And uh, each groove is 2.5 mm in width. So the width of the needle is determined by the cutter groove size. But the thickness of the uh, needle is determined by the roll gap. So let's start cutting it. And the dipping noodle is dipping noodle like does a good thickness. Um, and um, because the dipping noodle is usually the serving size is Pretty big. Um, usually, like 150 grams in fresh noodles weight, and um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a lot of weight portion. And um, this machine, this, this machine can actually adjust the length of the length of noodles, which changes the uh, the size of the noodles. So you can make it shorter to like make the serving size smaller. So you just have to wait a uh, little to see the sudden size, how the sudden size changes as you change the length of the middle. But then basically the the uh the size for chicken is like usually pretty big. And uh, so it's a That, that's how you make noodles, like chicken noodles from scratch and the machine. Um, so we're going to move to the kitchen where uh, Mr. V is going to share um, his special um, vegan uh, noodle dishes for takeout. And um, before we before we move to the kitchen, uh, you know we, we want to want to want to say that. Um, yeah, uh, we so we've been doing this um, class for uh, quite a while, and then like uh, this is going to be 16th this kind of class, and then uh, Mr. Fuji is going to join us like probably um, you know for more times like uh, in the different classes. So if you have some questions or like you feel like you no, know, you have like certain things that you want to know more about like from Mr. Fuji, um, please um, send them in the comments or like you know uh, send us. Uh, in the emails or whatever the means you have, All right? So let's uh, move to the kitchen.
So this is our kitchen that we use for our middle school. And uh, so again, like one of the instructors we have, uh, Mr. Takeuchi, uh, Ian Colin Thomas. And uh, so this is our uh, kitchen for our middle school. And then like, um, so he, and um, so we, we, we've been using this kitchen that we have exactly the same kitchen in the Tokyo office. And thank you, Mr. Fuji. And uh, we are very, very lucky to have him today to uh, teach us uh, some of his uh, special little dishes. And uh, so, Mr. thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for attending our class this time. Today, I want to show you two different types of uh, vegan ramen. Uh, uh, this ramen, uh, I selected especially for a uh, European market. So materials I use this time is red paprika. One uh, uh, Mazemen dami is uh, main uh, material is red paprika. And another is uh, Japanese miso and uh, Korean uh, uh, Kochijan, so Japanese and Korean mixture. So anyway, uh, today, uh, this month, uh, my company is uh, having an anniversary of 45 years. Uh, and I started this business. Uh, so I started this business 45 years when I was 27 years old. At first, I uh, manufactured noodle uh, machines and uh, I started uh, noodle school 20 years ago. So uh, from now from now on I want to uh, give you a lot of uh, excellent know-how of uh, our ramen school. Uh, our ramen school uh, future is uh, uh, no preservation no preservation we never we never use any preservation and uh, any additives and uh, no msg and uh, our method of cooking is uh, specialized by uh, digital cooking because of uh, before i was engineer so digital cooking is very very uh, easy to understand for you all but unfortunately now uh, our uh, Singapore Ramen School closed uh, until uh, February. So, and also, we maybe we cannot open uh, Ramen School uh, from now, maybe uh, one hour or uh, half of one hour, I, I, I'm not sure. So, uh, this time, we are now uh, preparing e-learning material for Ramen School. So maybe uh, uh, soon you can join our uh, e-learning. Uh, we want to soon, uh, we want to start e-learning school as soon as possible. Okay. Anyway, uh, today uh, we prepare little little uh, paper. Mazeme, uh, mazeme. It's a Japanese name, sometimes called dried noodle, because uh, no soup. So uh, this material is to uh, uh, Japanese name tofu. So uh, 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 and uh, soup base is made from uh, red paprika and. Uh, Two fruits, uh, apple and uh, pineapple, and another one is this one. Uh, this is uh, hot hot food, and uh, this is a cold noodle. And uh, so uh, this hot noodle we used uh, roasted uh, vegetables. Uh, and roasted uh, tofu. And 
This another one is vegan miso masume. And uh, tofu. This is also tofu. Soybean cake. And all vegetables are fresh because uh, this noodle is cold noodle. Okay? Uh, so let's start. <coughs> These materials all vegan, no animal food, no animal uh, materials. Uh, for instance, uh, this is uh, a sweet chili and white miso and uh, vinegar, mixed vinegar and uh, uh, salt, uh, onion. Uh, motodare seasoning, the salt, kelp seasoning, milling, uh, so concentrated milling, and uh, soy sauce, uh, uh, onion, onion soy sauce, uh, motodare, and uh, shiitake. Soy sauce motodare and kelp soy sauce motodare and these are flavor oil, leek flavor oil, uh, garlic flavor oil, roasted onion flavor oil, and uh, dry uh, hot chili, uh, chili oil and onion, normal onion oil. So this time we prepared all these uh, materials uh, and uh, this is a uh, uh, red uh, paprika, uh, red, uh, red paprika, uh, 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 this red paprika as sauce made from this paprika. This is a fresh one. And uh, opened. And uh, opened and peeled. Peeled, peeled the skin. So uh, after opened and peeled the skin, we make this uh, uh, paprika sauce by, mix, uh, by mixing with this mixer. So uh, this time we use this paprika as so and red paprika sauce and uh, several uh, motodare and several flavor oil. Okay. Mm. So let's try. Mm. Already uh, measured. Mm. 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 So we use uh, this paprika. Uh, base 50 gram this time 50 gram and pineapple uh, soup 25 gram apple juice soup 25 and kelp stock 50 gram so uh, already so this is a uh, pineapple and uh, apple and kelp, uh, kelp. All measured by uh, this recipe. So I mix with this uh, at first pineapple and second apple, third, okay, maybe this uh, cup is too small to mix all together. So I need. A uh, bigger one. This, this may be too big. 
Uh, you don't have a medium one uh, like this size. This uh, shape is very suitable. So, uh, kilp, at first kilp. And I mix all together. Uh, mix with pineapple and apple all together, like this. Mm. So, red paprika is a very popular uh, material, uh, vegetable in the uh, European market. So, this time I prepared red paprika. I mix all together, uh, all uh, soup bases, and uh, this uh, uh, sweet chili, sweet chili, eight gram. And next, uh, mixed vinegar. Four gram. Our uh, ramen school never use MSG. Instead of uh, MSG, we use this special uh, vinegar. And uh, next one, salt onion. One gram. And uh, next, kelp. Salt kelp, 15 gram. to make the uh, sharp edge to the uh, soup. So this uh, dried uh, salt makes the soup uh, very sharp taste, finally. But we must use this salt, not at first. The last time, because uh, uh, if we use this salt, uh, the, uh, the first time, salt makes become very mild. But after uh, uh, the end of uh, last time, we, if we use this salt, uh, we can feel very uh, sharp edge. And uh, meeting, uh, heated meeting. And uh, this is a uh, nuts paste. We make nuts paste by grinding. Mm. Okay. So uh, at first nuts is uh, dried, but uh, after grinding, nut becomes uh, like a liquid. Mm.
so uh, this nuts paste makes the teeth very deep. So uh, only uh, vegetable materials. Uh, it's rather difficult to make the taste deep, but uh, adding this nuts to a mixture, we ma can make a uh, taste very deep. And uh, next time, sesame paste. Sesame paste also makes the uh, taste very deep. Mm. Sesame paste, six gram. Nuts, uh, nuts paste also six gram. This sesame paste also makes the uh, a taste very deep. And next time, heated uh, onion soy sauce. Three gram. And heated uh, shiitake. Soy sauce, one gram. And uh, finally, heated uh, kelp soy sauce, three gram. So, color becomes a little bit darker. So, uh, last time, I add uh, flavor oil. The first time, deep oil, two gram. Uh, garlic oil, three gram. And uh, roasted onion oil, two gram. And chili oil. Five gram. So of uh, uh, finished. Uh, smells very nice. Smells very nice. So uh, now we started to boil noodle. So after boiling uh, the noodle boil, I uh, make presentation, and already uh, materials prepared. Uh, this uh, materials uh, from uh, tofu, soybean, so uh, soybean uh, cake, like uh, the uh, like this one. Hmm. So we cut random like this. So, uh, in order to make a good pro uh, be uh, beautiful presentation, we'd better uh, cut any materials in random, not uh, uniformly. It's very important factor to uh, cut uh, random. Rusted materials for uh, 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 red paprika mazemen. Me, me okay. This. Okay. Hi. So, uh, so this time I use this bowl. That's a shallow or uh, uh, bowl, and the shape is like this. And the color white. Okay. Mm. Okay. So I start uh, presentation.
ペーパーペーパー Today I boiled uh, noodle. Uh, this uh, noodle uh, cut size is 14 cut size and uh, 100, 116 gram of noodle we boiled. Okay, uh, noodle prepared. So next, uh, next time we use this uh, tofu and Uh, you never d i e like this. This is uh, cooked uniformly. So uh, this color and this uh, color is quite different. This is not uniformly. Uh, dark, very dark place and white place mixed. mixed. So this looks uh, beautiful, more beautiful compared to this one. Okay? So, uh, Not uniformly. Random is very, very important for、uh, best uh, presentation. So, this、uh, cutting also random. So, for、uh, protein,、uh, we use、uh, soy sauce. Uh, no, uh, uh, tofu. Okay, and next time I use so colorful uh, red paprika. And the red cut paprika also cut in a、uh, random shape.、Hmm? And green, uh, green chili,、hmm. and red paprika. So, this color combination is,、uh, makes uh, this uh, presentation better and better. Hmm. And this green is.、Uh, Uh, zucchini. Uh, this is、uh, material, zucchini. So,、uh, zucchini is also very familiar material for European people. Finally, I use、oh, uh, white deep.
Mm. And uh, it's better to make uh, rather high. And uh, uh, good in anime. Finally, I use red papri, uh, red uh, pink paper. So I finished. The first one I finished, so uh, uh, I try next one. Next one is uh, vegan miso mazeme. Mm. Mm. Ah, so, uh, next one, uh, vegan uh, miso mazeme and uh, soup materials, white miso and Kochijan, uh, uh, Korean Kochijan, and uh, Kelp stock. Okay, I start. At first, I mix. Miso and uh, cochineal uh, together. And, uh, so uh, the uh, uh, kelp soup I divide into uh, two, and uh, this is miso and kelp. White miso is not only a uh, simple white miso, but also this white miso is a uh, white miso motodare. So uh, this motodare contains a lot of materials, uh, like uh, 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 four different types of uh, white miso and uh, uh, ginger and uh, apple, uh, many and many other materials. White miso and kilt. Hmm. So next time, cochineal and kilt. Hmm. The first time I made this uh, uh, white miso or uh, uh, Vegan miso mazemen, I made this uh, menu uh, two years ago in Singapore Ramen School. I created this uh, vegan mazemen uh, for uh, uh, the lady student from Abu Dhabi.
にちょっとあのほら混ぜるやつある小さいあのほらあの混ぜる専門のやつ、うん。うん、ありがとう。うん。あ、あ、そう。I'd better use this one for mixing.、Uh, okay, becomes better. So, next time,、uh, CD. Uh, red chili, sweet,、uh, sweet chili,、uh, 10 gram. And salt, kelp, 2 gram. Next, uh, sesame paste. Uh, sesame paste, uh, eight gram. Mix nut paste, 15 gram. Uh, next, uh, soy sauce, heated soy sauce, onion, and、uh, shiitake, heated, two gram, and heated kelp, two gram. Finally, flavored oil, white leek, two gram. Garlic, three gram. Roasted、uh, onion, two gram. And uh, ga uh, gayu, uh, chili oil, three gram. Finished. Good taste, ah,、uh, good flavor.、Mm. Very good flavor.、Mm. Okay, so、uh, next time I use, I try to use this container instead of a、uh, uh, bowl because uh, uh, nowadays uh, 
take away and delivery、uh, food is very, very popular. And also,、uh, we recommend you to、uh, make this kind of、uh, delivery food because after Corona,、uh, many uh, uh, customers' lifestyle and、uh, sense of thinking changed. So,、uh, they、uh, want to, sometimes, many times, they want to go out to a、uh, restaurant. But、uh, instead of going to a restaurant, they want to stay at home and、uh, they want to eat inside of home. So, this,、uh, this kind of counter is very, very useful for、uh, takeaway. Okay, I try. Now,、uh, noodle.、Ah, so, noodle already boiled. So,、uh, I uh, uh, put this noodle inside of the bowl. Ah, sorry, uh, I'd, uh, I'd better uh, at first uh, uh, mix uh, this noodle mix with this sauce.、Mm. After, after mix, I use、uh, content. I make this noodle、uh, flat in the box. And then, in the presentation, before presentation, I cut materials. This is also、uh, up on the top. And this time also, I do not cut uniformly like this. Instead of uh, in, uh, Uniformly, I try to cut like this.、Mm. I cut this toe like a chicken breast. Next time I use Italian vegetable, chicory. Ah, 
before it's good, I must use this one, avocado. If I use chicory, I cut the chicory like this. can use zucchini, sliced zucchini. I want to use crescent. Looks very delicious. Maybe uh, uh, you can enjoy this menu by yourself. If uh, you cannot make uh, this one, anytime you can ask us. Yes, like so we, we have some questions like from some of you and uh, um, so what percentage of the uh, whole wheat to wheat use that's that was five three percent of whole wheat and then 97 percent of uh, uh, wheat flour um, yes uh, and then some of you like asked like uh, is it like being automatic dusted yes it, 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 it was like it was like automatic dusting uh, how long do we rest the hyd hydration dome, like room temperature? Uh, we, we did about like an hour. Um, can I review uh, these high hydration? Yeah, uh, Akakansi. Yes, Akakansi, like for those of you who don't know like what it is, like that's like 60% potassium carbonate and 40% sodium carbonate. And, um, OK, 
Okay, and then uh, someone like wonder like when uh, the course in Brown School like open in Singapore. Um, you know, for that like we, we don't know. We really don't know because that's after like uh, uh, when the government decides to uh, or you know lift the restrictions. So uh, we will we'll definitely like keep you informed. And uh, so thank you so much for all the questions. And uh, um, you know, as I told you, like this is the first one, first class that done by Mr. Fuji. So um, if like some of you like you know have like some certain subjects that you know you know Mr. Uh, you want Mr. Fuji to cover, then uh, please send them in the comments. Like you know, uh, send us emails, and uh, we'll, we'll be more than happy to like uh, you know respond to your requests. And then uh, Mr. Fuji is going to be doing like uh, some like uh, more, more and more of this type of classes, uh, all like in live, uh, streaming live. And then uh, so if you guys want him to, um, you know, like uh, do certain uh, things, uh, certain uh, classes, uh, just feel free to, uh, you know, uh, let us know. And um, so thank you so much for watching. And then. Um, as Mr. Fuji said, like you know, we've been working hard to um, get that e-learning uh, online course um, prepared. And so, uh, for those of you who are interested in it, um, please let us know, and then like we'll, we'll definitely like um, you know keep you guys informed. And then so, um, and we're going to be doing more, more, more this kind of class, online classes. And uh, so, for those of you like who haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, like please do so today. And then uh, we'll keep you informed of the uh, future classes. So thank you so much for watching our uh, special Noodle Online mm -hmm. class done by Mr. Fuji today. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will see you guys in the next class. So thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Uh, attending our class.